guys, it's me. So it was my birthday a few days ago. Yes, yes, okay, okay, yes, fine. I, I can, <laughs> I can already hear it. I can already hear it in the comments. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Okay, thank you, fine, whatever. But actually, please don't comment about my birthday because I actually get really insecure about my birthday. I don't know, I don't fuck with my birthday. I feel like it was probably because when I was a kid, I didn't really have any friends. <laughs> Hey, listen, like, this is not, like, therapy. What I'm trying to say is, for my birthday, I got, like, $150 in gift cards for two bookstores. My friends got me $50 for this like used bookstore and then my parents got me a hundred dollars for like my local indie bookstore which i never shop at i prefer getting used books and i always tell them that they don't listen though it's fine though i did go there yesterday and i was like damn this place is actually kind of nice maybe i should start coming here more but it has a really cringy name it's very millennial it's very like well that just happened <laughs> but recently i've been on like a major book buying in fact, I've actually been in the process of getting rid of a ton of books. I'm really into like not owning stuff right now. Like I really don't want to own things. I'm getting ready to have like a huge mental breakdown and just like leave, like flee the country. I'm planning that for more like October though, like when it starts getting cold. But I got those gift cards and I was like, well, I mean, I'm not complaining. Like I, like I, like I gotta use them now. <laughs> Yesterday I went to those two bookstores and I got got like 11 books and we're gonna start with the used books that I got. It's also I think in the order of like how I picked them up so that you can kind of like experience it with me. No, no, um, the first one I got is Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. I own and I read Giovanni's Room which is like his most famous book and this is I believe his first book he ever published. It says it's his first major work. But James Baldwin is a very prolific author. I think his books mainly revolve around race and queerness. What? Is queerness a word? Is he alive still? Let's Google it. Fingers crossed, right? Oh. Oh. This chronicles a 14-year-old boy's discovery one Saturday in March 1935. Ooh. The Great Depression. Of the terms of his identity as a stepson of the minister of a storefront Pentecostal church in Harlem, Baldwin's rendering of his protagonist's spiritual, sexual, and moral struggle of self-invention opened new possibilities. Okay, whatever. That's like boring. So I think it's just about a little gay boy growing up with a pastor stepfather in Harlem. Okay, the next one I picked up was The Prophet by Robert Jones Jr. This was like $4, so I just grabbed it because I think it's a pretty new release. I think it's quite similar to this other book that I've been meaning to read. Um... The Sweetness of Water, but The Prophet is about Isaiah and Samuel in the barn. The barn. In the barn, they tended to the animals, but also to each other, transforming the hollowed out shed into a place of sanctuary. But when an older man, a fellow slave, seeks to gain favor by preaching the master's gospel on the plantation, the enslaved begin to turn on their own. So I don't know when I'm gonna read this. Sounds good, but this is higher up on the little TBR shelf. The next one I picked up was Circe. Circe? Cer Circe. It's Cersei. I know it's Cersei. I don't know why I said Cersei. I think I just want to be a bit, like, relatable. Being stupid is honestly relatable because a lot of you are stupid. This is the author of The Song of Achilles, which is a book I read. I didn't really I like it that much. Do you know when you're, like, reprimanding your dog for, like, eating your shoe and they're like this? That's me right now. I already knew what was going to happen. Is it her? What? <laughs> the girl who was checking me out yesterday, not checking, like check, like at the cash register, but she was probably also, let's be real, she was also probably checking me out. She started talking to me about this book and she was like, I haven't read this one yet. I like told her that I had read the Song of Achilles and then she asked me what I thought about it and I was like, uh. I mean, I already knew the story. Isn't it about like, I said Hercules. 
Hercules. I said, isn't it about like Hercules? <laughs> Even though it's called the song of Achilles. Achilles. Did I press record? But yeah, basically what I said to her was like, I already knew the story, kind of. I just didn't know their names, apparently. Um, but I don't know what happens in this. I don't know the story of, what's her, what's name? her name? Oh Lord. Again. A fucking game. Oh. Her name is fucking Cersei. I was in the winter of my life. Cersei is the daughter of Helios, who is the god of sun and the mightiest of the titans. But Cersei, she's a strange girl. I saw this tweet the other day that was like, y'all need to stop telling kids that they're old souls because I grew up thinking that I was just mature for my age when really I was just a creep, which is like, Okay, yeah. <laughs> she turns to the world of mortals. I guess. <laughs> she discovers that she does possess power, the power of witchcraft, which can transform rivals into monsters and menace the gods themselves. Threatened, Zeus banishes her to a deserted island where she hones her occult craft, tames wild beasts, and crosses paths with many of the most famous figures in all of mythology, including the Minotaur. Insert that photo of Julia Fox. <laughs> this sounds better than the Song of Achilles. Can I say that? Okay, the next one I got was The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugen... Eugenides. I love this cover. I think it's like the movie cover, but of course The Virgin Suicides does the movie cover of the book right. Because that movie, I feel like is so aesthetic and i didn't know that it was based on a book and i was like damn i should really like check that out actually i don't know i just got the vibe that the book would be really good too but this is about the five lisbon sisters <laughs> they're beautiful eccentric that's a word sorry i know i keep going on these tangents i keep on hearing people say eccentric and i don't think that's right i think it's eccentric but i hear a lot of people who want to say eccentric oh. i think it's similar to like crayon and crayon I feel like in the East, they say crayon, but he here, we say crayon, which if you look at the word, crayon is the word. It's also similar to caramel and caramel. That shit does not spell caramel. Caramel. Sorry, I'm like getting emotional. <laughs> Um, commit suicide one by one over the course of a single year. As the boys observe them from afar, transfixed, they piece together the mystery of the family's fatal melancholy. Crazy shit. The movie was really good, and um, hopefully the book is just as good. I also read on here, when I picked it up, the Pulitzer Prize. I was like, this shit won the Pulitzer Prize? But then I read more of it. The Pulitzer Prize winning author of Middlesex. I said, oh, Jeff won the Pulitzer Prize for his other book. That's good for him. And then right beside this was Middlesex, which let me take Oprah, sorry. What? Now, girl, this shit is sticky. This is one of the sticky ones. I have this thing where whenever I see a book won an award, especially the Pulitzer for some reason, my response is to go, I'll be the judge of that. But it's about Calliope Stephanides and three generations of the Greek-American Stephanides family who travel from a tiny village overlooking Mount Olympus in Asia Minor what? to Prohibition-era Detroit, witnessing its glory days as the Motor City and the race riots of 1967 before they move out to the tree-lined streets of suburban Gross Point, Michigan to understand why Calliope is not like other girls. She has to uncover a guilty family secret and the astonishing genetic history that turns Callie into Cal. So yeah, very intrigued and interested. Oh, and then the last book that I got at this used bookstore was Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. This will be my third Toni Morrison, actually. I read Beloved and uh, she had a short story about like a Korean veteran, home, house, Oop. Something like that. But this is about Milkman Dead. What? Milkman Dead um. is their name. They were born shortly after a neighborhood eccentric hurled himself off a rooftop in a vain attempt at flight for the rest of his life. He too will be trying to fly with this brilliantly imagined novel. Okay. 
These synopsises need to get better. It's a coming of age story. And I think I've heard really good things about it. And I think this is probably like her, after Beloved, it's her most popular book. I think, I don't know. <laughs> and then these last five I bought new that have never been touched by the hands of another. <sighs> Why did I say that? The first one is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. You don't need that many words in your name. Emily Mandel was just good enough. Like no offense to St. John, wherever that comes from. You just don't need it. <laughs> Sorry to this man. Ow! She wrote The Glass Hotel and Station Eleven never read either of those books and i've heard really good things about this but this is about edwin <laughs> edwin saint andrew damn edwin saint andrew is 18 years old when he crosses the atlantic by steamship exiled from polite english society following an ill-conceived diatribe at a dinner party what's diatribe fuck you bitch that was a uh, an example of a diatribe, I think. I'm still not entirely sure. He enters the forest, spellbound by the beauty of the Canadian wilderness, and suddenly hears the notes of a violin echoing in an airship terminal. <laughs> Two centuries later, a famous writer named uh, Olive Llewellyn. 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 She is on a book tour. She's traveling all over Earth. <laughs> Just the sentence, she's traveling all over Earth. As if there's like a different planet. I think she might be an alien though. Wait, oh, okay, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But her home is the second moon colony, a place of white stone, spire towers, and artificial beauty. So she lives on the moon. A man plays his violin for spare change in the echoing corridor of an airship terminal as the trees of the forest rise around him. And then the third character, oh, the third character, Gaspery Roberts. <laughs> Fuck are these names? Gaspery Roberts. A hotel detective in the Black Skeed Night City is hired to investigate an anomaly in the North American wilderness. So yeah, I'm excited to read that. The next one I got was Indians on Vacation, which is for my book club. I'm in a book club with two of my friends. And before you comment like, oh, like, can we join? Like, I want to join. Like, uh. <laughs> Um, submissions are closed, it's very exclusive, and you will not be a part of it. But, if you, like, if you want, I, gu I guess, like, this is the book, this is the book we're reading for, like, August, I guess. So you could technically join my book club, but it would be like, you can read it in solidarity. That's not fun. That's fun. But this is about Bird and Mimi. It's inspired by a handful of old postcards sent by Uncle Leroy nearly a hundred years before. Bird and Mimi attempt to trace the journey of Mimi's long-lost uncle and the family medicine bundle he took with him to Europe. Why though? Ooh! They take a couple's holiday trip to Prague and beyond. I'm a big fan of Prague. Prague is a place I would love to go one day. Um... I don't know why. Do you know why, really, the real reason why I want to go to Prague is because you bitches can't even spell Prague. <laughs> this is how bad bitches need London to go to Prague. You bitches can't even spell Prague. So yeah, apparently it's very funny, very fun, just like a light, fun journey. I'm very excited to read this, and I'm excited for you to read along. In solidarity, though. The next one I got was either or, 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 either or by Alif Batuman. This is the sequel to The Idiot. Debatably one of my favorite books. It's up there. I fucking love this book. And I had no idea that there was going to be a sequel. I saw this, like, maybe two weeks ago. It's about Selin. I think it's, like, partly autobiographical. Like, it's about the daughter of... Turkish immigrants. Selin goes to Harvard. She also went to Harvard. I think they studied the same thing. There's some connections there, but I don't know. It's just about Selin. Goes away to Harvard. Makes friends. Makes enemies. Eats food. Goes on runs. Goes to sleep. Goes to class. Learns Russian. I feel like the main thing is her chasing this boy named Ivan. And then this is just kind of a continuation of the story. I believe this ends at the end of her freshman year. So I'm assuming this starts at the beginning of her sophomore year. That's right, right? I'm not American, and you bitches are crazy. Oh, I'm a junior. 
a what? And then I got Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion. Of course, duh. And this, I believe, is her first and maybe only fiction book. I don't know if that's true. But it's said to be a ruthless dissection of American life in the late 1960s, plumbing the emptiness and ennui of a seemingly bankrupt society in spare sentences that scour and disturb. Obviously, I've heard really great things about it. I have heard that in the middle, it gets kind of confusing, <laughs> but the vibes are there. I don't need a plot. I don't. I just need vibes. And then the last book that I got was The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. A few years ago, I read Cast, The Origin of Our Discontent, and it remains the best nonfiction book I've ever read. It compares the caste system in India to the hierarchical system in the States. But this, I believe, she wrote before Cast, and it is about one of the great untold stories of American history, which is the decades long migration of black citizens who fled the south for northern and western cities. From 1915 to 1970, this exodus of almost six million people changed the face of America. And that was the last book that I got. So that's, I think, 11 books. I did not need, I, I don't need more books, but I'm glad, like, thank you very much. And I'm glad that I got these, but I really did not need them. I'm done talking. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch.